In this video, we're going to demonstrate um, the node analysis method of analyzing circuits in the phasor domain. You'll recall from our previous discussions of node analysis that the first step in analyzing circuits using the node voltage approach involves identifying the critical or essential nodes. In this circuit, we've got one, two, three, four essential nodes. Again, an essential node is the node where three or more branches are connected. We choose one of these nodes to then serve as our reference node where we, by definition, we're going to say voltage is equal to zero. In this case, I've selected this node here to be our reference node, and so we'll set that voltage equal to zero. The other three nodes, or the three essential nodes, we will then identify or assign variables to them, variable names. This one we're going to call V1. The voltage of this node will refer to as V2, and the voltage of this node here will refer to as V3. Node voltage analysis then has us writing Kirchhoff's current law or node equations at each of these essential nodes, summing the currents leaving each of those nodes in terms of the node voltage variables and the circuit parameters in the circuit. So let's go ahead and do this. On this first node, let's write KCL at node 1. The current leaving this node coming down in this direction here will be V1 minus the voltage at this node minus the voltage at this point. Well, the voltage here by definition is zero, so it'll be V1 minus zero. We won't even bother, well, got it started, let's write it. V1 minus zero divided by the impedance there, which is three minus J4. Plus the current leaving this node going in this direction which is V1 minus V3 divided by the impedance here of 2 ohms, plus the current leaving this node going in this direction here. We need to be a little bit careful here. It's going to be the, the current leaving this node going in that direction will be the current through that resistor. The current through that resistor is equal to the voltage drop across that resistor divided by the resistance of 2 ohms. The voltage drop across that resistor is the voltage on this side, which is V1, minus the voltage on this side of the resistor. And here's where we need to be careful. The voltage here, in terms of node voltages, can be thought of as being, starting here at V2, V2, we drop going from here to here, crossing this voltage source of 12 volts. We drop 12 volts. So the voltage at this point, then, is going to be V2 minus 12 volts. So then the current leaving this branch going in that direction will be the voltage at the left-hand side of that resistor, which is V1, minus the voltage at the right-hand side of the resistor, which is V2 minus 12. We throw in the parentheses there to, to remind ourselves that we're subtracting the voltage there, which is V2 minus 12. Finally, the current in that branch then will be that voltage drop divided by 2, and that equals 0. Now, KCL at node 2, the current leaving this node going to the left, again is going to be the current through this resistor, only this time going from right to left. And that voltage will be the voltage here, which we've already established to be V2 minus 12 volts minus the voltage over here, which is V1, minus V1, divided by the 2 ohms. The current coming down the node, or leaving this node coming down, is going to be then added in, and that's simply V2, divided by the impedance of 2 plus 1J, or simply J. And then the current leaving node 2 going to the right will be equal to V2 minus V3 divided by 2 ohms. And the sum of those three currents equals 0. Now, at the third node, we've got KCL at node 3. The current leaving node 3 and coming to the left is going to be V3 minus V2 divided by 2 ohms. Plus, the current leaving this node going up and over to the left is going to be V3 minus V1 divided by 2 ohms. And finally, the current leaving node 3 coming down this way is going to be the voltage drop across that 2 ohm resistor, which will be V3 minus 
the voltage right there. Now the voltage at that point is equal to, starting here, the reference node 0 minus to plus, we go up a value of negative J6 volts. So the voltage right here then is 0 minus J6, and then the current through here will be V3 minus a minus J6 divided by the 2 ohms, and the sum of those three currents equals 0. Those are the th three note, note equations. All that's left now to calculate the node voltages V1, V2, and V3 is a little bit of algebra. Let's start by combining like terms. Let's do that on up here. The V1 terms in the first equation, I've got V1 over, let's see, 3 minus J4. I've got V1 over 2, and I've got another V1 over 2, so plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 gives us the V1 terms. Plus the V2 terms here, we've got uh, only one right here. And that's a minus V2 over 2, so if we pull the V2 out, we'll have a minus 1 half there. And then our V3 terms, there again is only one of them. It's a minus V3 over 2, so we have V3 times a negative 1 half. And that then will equal, let's see, we've got a 12 volts here. 12 divided by 2 is 6. A minus times a minus is a plus. So I've got plus 6 on the left-hand side. We subtract 6 from both sides to bring our constant over there on the right-hand side. Now, combining like terms in the second equation, we have V1 times, and this one we've only got one term. It's going to be a negative V1 over 2. So we pull the V out, or the V1 out, and we're left with a negative 1 half plus V2 times. I've got V2 over 2, V2 over 2 plus J, and V2 over 2. So V2, or uh, let's see, V2 would be 1 half plus 1 over 2 plus J plus another 1 half. And then the V3 terms, again, there's only one, and that will be a negative one-half. Now, here we've got a minus 12 over 2, so I've got a negative 6 volts on the left-hand side. We add 6 volts to plus to uh, both sides, and that gives us then equaling positive 6 volts on the right-hand side. Now, equation 3, we have V1 times a negative one-half plus V2 times, got a negative one-half again, plus V3 times, we've got one-half plus one-half plus one-half. That's three-halves V3. Now here we've got a constant of a negative times a negative. That's a positive J6 over 2. So on the left-hand side, we have a positive J3, which we subtract J3 from both sides, gives us then a negative J3 over here on this side. All right, moving ahead, now just cleaning things up so that we're ready to put it into a matrix solver. Let's uh, combine all those fractions here, and when we do that, we've got V1 times um, 1.12 plus... 0.16j plus v2 times a negative 0.5 plus v3 times a negative 0.5 equals negative 6 volts. The second equation we have v1 times a negative 0.5 plus v2 times 1.4 minus 0.2 j plus v3 times a negative 0.5 equals a positive 6. And finally, the third equation, we have v1 times a negative 0.5 plus v2 times a negative 0.5 plus v3 times a negative 0.5 equals a negative 0.5.
plus V2 times a negative 0.5 plus V3 times 1.5 is equal to a negative J3. When you plug this into a matrix solver of some sort, you come up with that V1 is equal to, in rectangular coordinates, a negative 4.72 minus 0.88J, which in polar coordinates is 4.8 angle negative 169.5. V2 is equal to 2.46 minus 0.87j, which in polar coordinates is 2.6, angle negative 19.84, and V3 we find to be equal to negative 0.76 minus j 2.59 in rectangular coordinates and in polar coordinates that's 2.7 angle, negative 106.29. Those, of course, are all degrees. Now that we have the voltages at each of the nodes, we can calculate any current or voltage that we might want to calculate. For example, let's determine the current leaving node 2 coming down this branch here. Well, it's called in this... Uh, circuit here, it's been identified as I5 or I sub L. So I5 then is equal to V2 divided by 2 plus J, which is equal to V2 is 2.6, angle negative 19.84, divided by 2 plus J. And we find then that that is equal to, in polar coordinates, 1.16 angle negative 46.4 degrees.